Australia is an island nation with a vast coastline and significant maritime interests. Submarines are vital for protecting our national security. In the late 1970s, the Australian government identified the need for a sovereign submarine manufacturing capability in order to reduce our dependence on foreign suppliers and governments. Constructing submarines was considered a complex and daunting task for any nation. Building that in country and building the infrastructure to be able to support in country has been a huge positive growth for the nation in terms of its industrial base. In 1985, ASC was established as the Australian Submarine Corporation and was selected to build a new class of submarine to replace the ageing Oberon-class fleet. On the 3rd of June 1987, the Government and ASC signed what was then Australia's largest ever defence contract to build six new conventional Collins-class submarines. In 1989, Bob Hawke opened the new shipyard at Osborne in South Australia. I came down the day after Bob Hawke opened up the facility in Osborne. It was a shell basically, there were no offices fitted out, no desks, everything was just a shell and no people. It's a bit surreal. Infrastructure was built, a highly skilled workforce assembled and an extensive supply chain was established to support the construction of the new submarines, with Defence Minister Kim Beasley attending the first keel laying in 1990. So the first keel laying ceremony was the first official ceremony we had and I remember having a politician on site of that ilk was really, really exciting and ASC spruiked up the day and it was an exciting day for the company. In 1992, ahead of the new submarines being delivered, ASC partnered with the Royal Australian Navy to deliver submariner training at the Submarine Training and Systems Centre at Garden Island in Western Australia. Submarines are the, the most complex technical assets and they therefore demand the highest levels of training. The first of class HMAS Collins was launched in 1993 and was delivered to the Royal Australian Navy in 1996. The Collins class subs were named after prominent and distinguished sailors and officers from World War II. The first Collins class launch, which was HMAS Collins, was a really, really exciting day. It was a family day. The place was just a buzz, packed with dignitaries, different suppliers and families, which was great. You got to bring your families to where you work and it was such a historic day. HMAS Farncombe followed in 1997, HMAS Waller in 1999, HMAS Deschano and HMAS Sheehan in 2000, and the final submarine in the fleet, HMAS Rankin, was delivered in 2003. In that same year, ASC's role of maintaining the submarines was formalised with a through-life support maintenance contract deep long-term maintenance known as full cycle dockings are undertaken at Osborne. It happens every 10 years and is scheduled to take two years. Basically the submarine is completely refurbished. The submarine is blasted and repainted as well as the hull is cut in order to take out some of that equipment so that we can refurbish them. The submarine also undergoes a mid-cycle docking and that takes place at AC West at Henderson. The boat is taken out of the water and put into the submarine facility where it undergoes quite a large refurbishment which takes about 12 months. We also undertake intermediate maintenance which happens at the HMA Stirling facility at Garden Island West in Western Australia. In the wake of the 2012 Coles Review, ASC launched a reform program. What the Coles Review achieved was working with the Navy, Department of Finance, the Department of Defence and our supply chain to become world class with maintenance availability. We replanned our uh, industrial base and replanned the way we did work to actually reduce the hours of the scope of work from about 1.2 million man hours down to about 800,000 and we took over a year off the schedule. It makes me extremely proud how we maintain the high standards of the Collins class submarine and the material availability for these submarines, ensuring that they're all ready to go when the Navy need them. The Australian Government has announced its intention to acquire and build nuclear-powered submarines in the 2030s and beyond. In March 2024, the Government formally announced ASC as a sovereign submarine partner for the AUKUS program. 
ASC will be the prime contractor for the sustainment of nuclear-powered submarines in Australia. This will begin with a rotational force of US and UK boats from 2027, followed by Royal Australian Navy US-built Virginia-class submarines from the early 2030s and Australian-built SSN AUKUS boats from the early 2040s. Concurrently, ASC will jointly build the new SSN AUKUS class of conventionally armed nuclear-powered submarines for the Royal Australian Navy through an incorporated joint venture formed with BAE Systems. Construction will begin before 2030 with the first SSN AUKUS scheduled for delivery in the early 2040s. In the intervening period, ASC will ensure that the Royal Australian Navy continues to operate a potent conventional submarine capability. Our role is to make sure that that capability is viable, capable and safe for the nation's Navy. The Life of Type Extension Program, or LOAT, will extend the service life of all six Collins-class submarines into the 2030s, with the first submarine commencing its life of type extension in 2026. The LOAT looks to update some of the capabilities and the major equipment such as the main motor, diesel generator sets and some of the other auxiliary items that support those particular pieces of equipment. ASC is Australia's submarine company and has proudly supported the Royal Australian Navy for over 35 years. Moving forward, ASC will continue to play a pivotal role supporting Australia's security as the nation undertakes the transition to conventionally armed nuclear-powered submarines. ASC, Australia's submarine company.